Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our daily video devotion time. I thought for a change of pace, I'd come down to the church and sit underneath Kay Davidson's plaque and uh, in the church lobby so you can enjoy seeing the church a little bit. Just a little bit of a scan so you can remember what the lobby looks like since it's been so long since we've been here lately. Uh, but it's good to have you with us, and I look forward to seeing your comments as you're able to post them uh, during our time together. We Presbyterians are very aware of the temptation to create idols. We take something, we can take just about anything. It might even be something that is inherently good, like family or the Bible, for example. But we can take it and elevate it to it, the place of importance that belongs only to God. We can take something and make it the most important thing in our lives. We can look to it for blessing and joy and purpose. We can look to it to solve all of our problems. Now, as this pandemic continues, people are talking about when we can get back to normal. I'm not gonna get into issues of when the isolation can end or how we go back to normal, but I wanna talk about the concept of normal and how we can risk getting back to normal to become an idol for us. We can say, oh, when things get back to normal, the economy will boom, families can have joy being together, life will be beautiful, everything will be all better when we get back to normal. When we start talking about being back to normal like that, we risk turning it into an idol. First of all, there's no such thing as normal. Every day, every week, every year is different. Life is constantly changing and growing and evolving. So when you say normal, you're probably not thinking about what normal actually really is. Second, of course, normal looks different for everyone. Your normal would probably be my change of pace and vice versa. Third, and I think most importantly though, it seems as though we're glorifying what life used to be like before the pandemic hit. We're turning what life used to be into something it never was. Don't you remember a couple months ago, we would watch the news or we'd hear what's going on and we would shake our heads and say, what's this world coming to? Things are just falling apart all around us. That's the normal that now we are thinking is perfect and wonderful. When we think back to where things used to be, or maybe, maybe put another way, we keep thinking that when we get back to normal, life will be wonderful, the world will be amazing. In other words, we are turning normal into an idol, into a false god. In other words, we're a lot like the Israelites were when they were in the wilderness after they escaped slavery in Egypt. We're in a bit of a wilderness of our own right now. Theirs was a literal wilderness. Ours is more of a metaphorical wilderness. Life in this wilderness we find ourselves in is challenging for us. And life in the wilderness was certainly challenging for the Israelites as well. It was so challenging, in fact, that they frequently wished for things to get back to normal. Normal for them meant life the way it was back in Egypt. Over and over and over again, they would say, why can't we go back to Egypt? Why can't we live the way we used to when we were in Egypt? Their problem was the memory of life in Egypt was more like fantasy than reality. Take, for example, in the 16th chapter of Exodus, this, by the way, is only a month and a half after they escaped slavery in Egypt, just a month and a half after they crossed through the Red Sea. Things are getting rough and they said, oh, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but now you've brought us into this wilderness to starve the entire assembly to death. Hmm. It seems as though they forgot what life was like as slaves. The Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. They killed their baby boys so there wouldn't be too many Israelites. 
They did all sorts of other terrible, harsh things to them. They certainly did not have any all-you-can-eat dinner buffets like they think they can remember sitting around pots of meat eating all that we want. No, they wanted to go back, back to what normal seemed like to them. Later on in the 14th chapter of Numbers, they started talking about getting rid of Moses and finding a different leader who would bring them back to Egypt, back to the place where they had fled from. They were sick of harsh life in the wilderness, and they wanted things to go back to normal. But God had a bigger plan. God had a better plan for them. God wanted more for them than to live in bondage as slaves. He wanted to bring them into what they called the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. This was something different, something far better than any normal they had known in the past. The key to getting to this new wonderful place was following and obeying the Lord. In other words, letting the Lord be their God and not some fantasy, not some idol, not some false God of their own making. We need to set us, when we set aside anything, we need to set aside anything other than God himself to be our source of hope, our sense of purpose. Even our hope for getting out of isolation and getting back to normal, we need to set that aside as being our God, as being what will solve all our problems. Life before the pandemic hit was far from perfect. We kind of forget that, don't we? And post-quarantine life is gonna come with a whole new set of challenges and struggles, along with new opportunities and things we can't even imagine right now, things that we will never experience if we keep hankering after what life was normal like before this all came about. Now, life after the quarantine is not gonna be some promised land, but we know we will never know exactly what it is as long as we are pining for the slavery of the old normal. So remember, our hope and our strength come from God alone. Let's keep ourselves open for what he is doing now and what he is going to be doing in the future. Let's look to the Lord instead of hoping for some normal that only exists in our imagination. Please pray with me. Lord God, it is so easy for us to become distracted from you, to look to other people and other things, other hopes, that we think will make life wonderful. Give us the courage to hope in you. Give us the courage to wander through this time of wilderness, not hankering after something that used to be, but watching what you are going to do, something new and wonderful in our lives and in this world. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you're with us, and I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.